Hi, I'm Mrs. J. I'm one of the creative young artist instructors. I'm a professional children's book illustrator, a storyboard artist, a comic creator, and I have 10 years experience working with younger age groups. My class primarily focuses on teaching the fundamentals through a combination of drawing games and exercises so that students that may be a little bit hesitant to try new things or work on their fundamentals are encouraged to do so because it's a game and they're having fun. I believe that art is fun. So I have a very lively approach to teaching my lessons. I personally make uh, different activities for my students so that we can have a good time while we're learning. Today we're going to work on one of the warm-ups that I often do with my class. It's called Shapes vs. Details. We're going to take some basic shapes and then build upon them with details so that we can work on our drawing process. This is one of the three main things I really focus on my class, which drawing process, composition, and storytelling. So this will be one of the three things that I primarily focus on. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start drawing. I have all of my supplies here ready to go. I have my pencil. This one's my favorite brand because the erasers act because the erasers actually work. <laughs> uh, I have my inking pens. I like to use microns. I usually have at least three different sizes. Here I have a 05. I have a graphic one, which is is just means it's it's thicker than a normal pen. It's great for outlining and filling in areas. And I also have a 12. Yes, they make them in a size 12. And also very good for filling in spaces or for thick outlines. Uh, last pen I have is uh, a Uniball white ink pen. This is great for editing line work or for adding highlights at the end of your illustration, which is what I really like to use it for. I have markers. So I have a blend of, let me grab two. Um, I use a mixture of Prismacolor and Blick Studio markers. They're pretty close to the exact, being the exact same thing. The only difference really is that the Blick markers have a broader end on them. The Prismacolor, like it's a harder edge. The Prismacolor is a little bit softer, um, but Look, studio markers are a little bit cheaper and they, they work just as good, so I use both. Also for uh, color pencils, I have the same, a mixture of Prismacolor and Blick Studio. They work pretty much the same, it's just a slight price difference. Uh, so I have those. I, I have The reason I have very specific colors for Prismacolor is because I like to create a palette. So I have my favorite colors and I make sure that I match the color pencils with the markers that I use. Since I like to uh, use mixed media and encourage the kids to also use mixed media, which is using different materials to create the same drawing. Uh, since a lot of my kids in my classes are younger, they like to create more cartoony looking characters and a combination of markers and color pencil is really great for that. All right, so. This warm-up is called Shapes versus Details. Something that is very important to me in my class is the use of shapes. A lot of my students are younger and you know, one of the big the biggest hurdles I feel with younger artists is that they really draw, try to draw by outlining. But that's something I try to teach them is that they can look at things as being basic shapes and then build on top of those shapes to create the drawings that they want. So this is a good way for them to just kind of get an introduction to that. I'm gonna draw just two characters. Normally we draw four, but I'm just gonna draw two because I'm gonna fully color them. And that's gonna take a little bit longer. So for this uh, exercise, I'm going to draw a circle and a square. Okay, so let's start with my circle. Another thing I always try to encourage my students to do is to draw with their whole arm and not just their wrist. Writing and drawing are two different things. 
Okay, so here's my square. Drawing lightly is another uh, hurdle. Uh, it's very good to just start by drawing light, place your drawings, and then build on top of that. So here I have my circle and my square. I'm gonna turn them into two different characters using the shape as a base. So now that I have my shape, um, I'm gonna start building out my character with a few more shapes and then I'm gonna add some details to bring it all together. So up here I have you know, some basic shapes, circle, square, triangle, a cylinder, and a cube. I encourage students to try to think of those shapes and place them first before they start drawing all the details. So here I'm gonna turn this circle into a dinosaur, I think. So I'm gonna start adding adding my shapes. I'm gonna use cylinders for the legs. And I like to draw really simple cartoony characters, but if you're drawing a more detailed character, I do recommend still kind of starting with the same technique because it builds a strong base and it's just a lot faster to sketch out your ideas this way. Okay, and put the crosshairs there. Uh, construction is another thing I work on in my classes. I'm really all about the basics. Construction, process, building out your character in a smart way so that you're not constantly starting over or having to erase, 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 erase. As I erase. Just the extra stuff that I don't need now that I have my character worked out. Okay, so maybe I'll add some stripes, All right? Give them a little, little decoration, belly shape, and then just because it's fun, let's give them a little hat. All right, so there is our dinosaur. All right, now I'm going to start inking the character. I'm gonna have this character have a thicker outline, but I'm not gonna start with the really thick pen. And the reason is that it just never looks the same. You kind of want to have a first layer of pen and also so we can have different line widths. So I'm going to start with the 05. Now, one of the reasons that I encourage my students to get inking pens and to practice their inking um, is because it does two things. One, it does make the drawing look a little nicer and cleaner. And two, uh, especially for younger artists, it, it helps build in that extra muscle memory and stability in their drawing hand. So they can, it, it forces them to also be a little bit more confident with their drawings, right? Because once you start using the pen, you can't go back and keep redoing your lines. It's Once it's there, it's there, that's it. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start inking. Now the trick to inking I think I already might have mentioned this, is to be confident. You can't like take your take your time or like ink it slowly. To really get good at it, you have to have smooth lines. And to have smooth lines, you have to just go for it. 
Okay. Uh, it's also it's also good to know that it doesn't have to follow the lines exactly. So even though right we have our our pencils there, the lines don't have to line up perfectly. Sometimes I adjust I adjust things or it goes off course a little bit. That's fine. I also move around a little bit when I'm inking. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, so there we go. We're already almost done. Okay, time for the face. I'm gonna actually ink this hat first. Because I want this part of the hat to go over the head a little bit. Some overlapping. There we go. Time for the eyes. The other nice thing about inking pens um, versus a lot of kids like to use Sharpies because uh, they are cheaper. But the thing with inking pens and Sharpies is that after a little bit of time, Sharpies will fade and they'll start to turn green. With these, that doesn't really happen. Unless it's, I mean, they don't turn green, but it can fade if you leave it somewhere where it's directly in the sun. I don't recommend doing for any piece of traditional art. Oops, I forgot the stripes. I mean, let me go ahead and um, ink the stripes. So one, two, three, four, five stripes. And then I'll, I'll just go ahead and ink this part too. Okay, so now I'm done with my base lines. I'm gonna go ahead and erase. I like to use the polymer erasers because they do not smudge and they're really easy to clean. It's a little rattly. Maybe you can hear the rattling I have lots of art supplies on this table so they kind of move <laughs> a little bit okay so see erased all the pencil now i'm left with my nice clean lines Uh, now I'm going to color and then I'm going to add my, I add my, my extra thick outline at the very end. So let's see, what color do I want to make my dinosaur? I can make him any color I want. Usually I like blue, but I think I'm going to go for one of my favorite colors, which is parrot green. Let's see. See, I have parrot green and parrot green light. And I have celadon green, which might be good for shading. And I need a blue too. Let's see, I need a doo -doo 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 -doo, maybe. No, that's not light enough. Muted turquoise might work. Okay, so let's test our colors. I always tell my students to test their colors before they they start working on something so they have a visual reference of what the color is going to look like and to make sure they they get what they want okay so these are going to be perfect i'm going to use this one for the base and then this one to shade and let's see how this one looks and eh, not too crazy about that i'm going to put that one back and this one is 
muted turquoise. Yeah, I can use this one. Okay, and then uh, for the stripes, maybe maybe that muted turquoise, but I think it's going to be a little bit bland if it's all the same color. So let me see what sunburst yellow. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, so we'll make the stripes sunburst yellow. And then let me grab a light yellow for... I should have a canary yellow in here somewhere. I don't see it though. Oh wait. Here it is. Haha. <laughs> canary yellow. I'll use that for the eyes. Sometimes I don't want the, the eyes to, like what's usually the whites of the eyes to just be white. A little bit of extra color just kind of gives it a little more vibrancy. Alright, so now let's color. Uh, because, again, some of my students are, are still growing as artists. Well, we're always growing as artists. Um, one of the other things I focus on in my class is to complete a drawing from start to finish uh, and to also work on making everything look nice and neat and tidy when it's done, at least as much as possible. So maybe not that side, this side, okay. So I'm gonna start coloring. The, the way I show the kids to color with marker is to color a section at a time, which is, which is kind of how I do it. Now, if, if somebody finds a better way to do something that works for them, I, I never like, no, 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 don't do that. Because there's not one way to really do almost anything in art. I just kind of show how I do it and then if that if that really works for them then great if not that's fine they could they could try other methods okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just color I like to outline and then fill in going the same direction The trick with markers that I found is when you're filling in a spot, you have to fill in the entire area before it dries or it starts uh, making everything blotchy or it starts adding that extra layer and then everything is not the same color. Okay, so let's do this. So the thing with making drawings look nice is that it does take a little bit more time, but that's okay. Like if you're working on something and you need to take a break, it's okay to take a break. You don't always have to finish everything the same day you start it. 